Hello and good afternoon to you all. Uh, my name is Daryl Lawler and I am Senior Economics Researcher here at the Institute of International and European Affairs. And it is my great pleasure uh, to welcome you to this webinar here today. Uh, we're delighted to be joined today by Dr. Katrine Assenmacher, who is the head of the Monetary Policy Strategy Division at the European Central Bank, who's been very generous to take time out of her busy schedule to speak to us today. Uh, today, we're going to discuss the topic of central bank digital currencies and specifically the question of whether we will see the introduction of a central bank digital currency for the euro area, something which may have seemed like it was out of a, a sci-fi movie maybe 20 or 30 years ago, uh, but is very much a realistic prospect now in terms of the advancements in technology. Katrine will speak to us for about uh, 10 to 15 minutes, and then we will go to Q&A and discussion uh, with you, our audience. Um, you'll be able to join the discussion using the Q&A function on Zoom, which you should see at the bottom of your screen. Uh, please feel free to send in your questions throughout the session as they occur to you, and we'll come to them after Katrine has finished her presentation. You can also participate on the discussion on Twitter uh, using the handle at IIEA, and please feel free to do so as well. A reminder that today's presentation and the question and answer session afterwards are both on the record. So I will now formally introduce Katrine and hand you over to her to get us started. So Katrine Assenmacher has been the head of the Monetary Policy Strategy Division of the European Central Bank since November 2016. Uh, prior to that, she, from 2010 to 2016, she led the Monetary Policy Analysis Unit at the Swiss National Bank, and she has published various articles uh, in international academic journals on the subjects of monetary policy and time series econometrics. Uh, Dr. Assenmacher holds a doctorate and diploma in economics from the University of Bonn, where she also received her habilitation. So we're absolutely delighted to be joined uh, by you today, Katrine, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Daryl, for the kind introduction and also good afternoon to all of you uh, from my side. And I'm uh, thank you very much for having me in the webinar. I prepared a few slides, so which I will now share. So I hope you're able to see them. So yeah, let me first say all of what I'm saying today are my personal views and I'm not speaking in any official role for the European Central Bank. Um, and I'm also not a member of the Digital Euro Project. So um, as you may know, the ECB has started to work on a project uh, for a possible introduction of a digital euro. And a question that often arises is uh, why does the ECB wants to do that? So first uh, argument is that uh, in an age where cash is getting increasingly sidelined and uh, many people pay electronically and you also have uh, e-commerce where you cannot use cash uh, in any way, uh, a digital euro would act as a monetary anchor and would preserve public access to central bank money. So currently, for the general public, cash is the only way how you can access central bank money. Of course, you have uh, euros on your bank account, but this is not central bank money. It's instead a liability uh, uh, against the uh, commercial bank. And uh, this liability translates one to one into uh, official money. So you can always redeem your account in cash. But if cash is not any useful for transactions anymore in the future, what would be the monetary anchor that ensures this one-to-one -one convertibility? And there, a digital euro could play a role uh, in ensuring uh, access to public money in an age of uh, declining use of cash. And such a digital euro would be accessible to all users in euro area countries on the same terms. So uh, currently, of course, uh, banks, uh, have different conditions in the euro area and also payments are, not all euro area citizens are equally well served uh, in terms of digital payments. And that's the second objective for a digital euro. So a digital euro would strengthen the strategic autonomy of the euro area by increasing the independence from non-European payment solutions. So currently, if you do an electronic payment, uh, yeah, it's very likely that this payment is processed by a non-European company. So Visa, MasterCard are American companies 
and there is not a European solution. So these payments go through other countries outside the euro area. So a European payment solution would increase economic efficiency and would provide an alternative to private providers that might dominate the payments landscape. So it would be kind of be of an outside option and the digital euro would ensure that payments are effected on the same terms across the euro area. So currently it's that private payment solutions tend to favor the big countries because for these payment companies, it's more attractive to go into a big country and offer their services at uh, favorable terms there. But smaller countries at the periphery of the euro area are often less well served. And this is also something a digital euro would be able to address. So I would like to spend a little bit of time on definitions. So what uh, distinguishes central bank digital currencies from other forms of uh, digital money or uh, assets? So first, um, there are liabilities of a central bank and I already referred to cash. So if you hold in your area bank note, it's on the balance sheet of the ECB. So it's a liability of the ECB but it's physical and uh, it can be held by the general public. There is a digital central bank liability, which is bank reserves, um, but uh, this is not available to the general public. It's only available to banks. So only banks can act as a counterparty to the ECB and can hold an account at the ECB where they uh, can hold digital central bank uh, money. So, uh, digital euro would be a complement to cash and these uh, central bank deposits as it would be digital and it could be uh, held by uh, all citizens across the euro area. Um, digital money on your bank account, it's a liability of a private entity. Um, there are other forms of digital money, but all of them are um, private uh, yeah, liabilities of a private entity. For example, there is this e-money. So um, there, there was a time when you had a chip on your card. There are other forms of e-money providers. And there are also stable coins, uh, which are um, digital money that is backed by a uh, reserve. And again, here you have a claim against the private entity that um, backs this claim with uh, short-term assets, but it's not of the same um, safety as a central bank money. And finally, there are crypto assets, which are digital, but which are not even a liability because they are generated by a computer algorithm and um, there is nothing behind uh, the valuation of, it's, it's just the appreciation of this money, but there is no issue where that can be held liable or uh, no asset behind this crypto money. So these are very different forms of um, assets and uh, a CBDC would be in that form like cash in a digital form whereas the other two uh, monies are, are not like cash. So the ECB has launched a project on the digital euro. It was launched in July, 2021, when the governing council decided to launch an investigation into uh, potential issuance of a digital euro. So there is a project team taking care of that. There is a governance of the project team and this project team has looked at different use cases. And we have uh, published various reports uh, on focus groups, on uh, what citizens think of that, what merchants uh, um, would like to have uh, uh, of a digital euro. Um, we have uh, published several reports on how we think a digital euro could be designed, in what regards online, offline availability, in what regards privacy, how it would be transferred uh, uh, between users and also uh, from the central bank to users. And um, yeah, last quarter, uh, last quarter of 2022, um, we uh, made a little bit more uh, explicit how we see intermediaries in this uh, setup. So the digital euro would not allow you to directly hold um, digital euro with the ECB, but it would be an intermediate uh, model where banks take uh, care of the onboarding of customers and uh, the central bank uh, provides the digital euro to the banks. So it will be distributed like in the current two-tier system. So it will not be bypassing the banks, but banks would do the handling and the account management. And um, the central bank would provide the, the, the digital euros to the banks. Um, yeah, of course, there are a lot of technical discussions going on like um, who in this uh, scheme would be compensated for which services 
what costs would the central bank be bearing, what costs would bank bear. Uh, it's clear that for consumers, uh, the use of the digital euro would be cost free. So um, if you go to a shop and you would like to pay digital with digital euros, uh, it is envisaged that it should be legal tender so that uh, merchants and shops are required to accept digital euro and um, that uh, it would be cost free for, for users. But of course, this would mean it would not be cost free for everybody in this uh, payment chain, but uh, just for the consumers. So now uh, we are at a point where um, we will wrap up this first phase of the uh, project. The governing council will have a meeting this month and decide uh, what the next steps would be, whether uh, the project should continue and move to the next phase, which would be an experimentation phase with uh, more concrete uh, prototyping, uh, experiments, testing, or whether this, this would be stopped. So frankly, I, I do not expect that it will be stopped, but um, we will have the discussion in a few weeks time and then um, there will be a press release and um, information about how the next uh, steps would uh, look like. So of course, it's a big decision to go digital with the central bank digital currency. There are a few central banks that have already done it, but these are probably not good pattern for major central banks. So currently uh, Bahamas and Nigeria have a, a central bank digital currency, but these countries um, are yeah, also um, looking at central bank digital currency to make the general payment system more efficient, which is not an, so much an issue in the Euro area. Uh, CBDC creates many opportunities. So first, um, you can uh, introduce very innovative payment services by linking payments to conditions. So um, a digital euro would allow for some programmability, although it would uh, programmable payments, it would not be programmable money because um, money uh, needs to be fungible and uh, needs to be uh, available for purchases of uh, different services, but of course, banks could offer or payment uh, service providers could offer additional features that uh, are tacked onto these uh, digital means of payment. It would allow for a diversification of financial services and service providers. So currently only registered banks can interact with the ECB. It's envisaged that also payment providers can uh, distribute digital euro. So the a range of institutions that can provide these services would be broader than just traditional banks. And uh, there are also many hopes that uh, digital currencies would facilitate international payments. That said, there are, of course, uh, limitations to this facil uh, facilitation of international payments, because first, uh, systems would need to be interoperable. And second, there is also a lot of regulation on the international level, especially with counter-terrorist financing and uh, anti-money laundering laws, which uh, slow down international payments and make uh, margins on these payments fairly large. These would not go away just by introducing digital currencies. But there are also a lot of uh, challenges to the financial system arising from uh, digital currencies. So first, uh, a digital currency is an offer from the central bank. So you could expect that maybe um, depositors start to shift their deposits uh, from the banking sector into a, a digital currency. That's the liability of the central bank and therefore inherently safer than a bank deposit. And this could uh, lead to uh, an increased risk of bank runs. Um, however, also in normal conditions, the fact that uh, deposits migrate away from the banking system could have an implication for monetary policy transmission and implementation. So deposits are considered as a very safe uh, funding source for banks, a low cost safe funding source. If this source becomes more mobile and moves into another asset, then uh, bank funding could become more expensive and this could have implications for credit creation and finally um, the financing of uh, investments in the real economy. In the real economy. If that were to be uh, happening uh, very abrupt, abrupt, this could of course uh, create uh, stress in the financial system because liabilities would shift from one sector in the financial system to, to another entity. It could also create challenges for monetary policy implement implementation. 
So in implementation, you have to forecast liquidity demand. If this liquidity demand becomes more on uncertain because of the digital euro, um, it would uh, controllability of the short-term interest rate would be more difficult. And it could also lead to an increase in the balance sheet of the central bank. So especially in the past with uh, high, um, large balance sheets and uh, constraints on safe assets, this could mean that the central bank is taking even more uh, safe assets on its uh, balance sheet. And finally, as I already said, there is a latent risk of bank runs. Um, if a bank uh, comes into trouble, uh, depositors could much more easily shift into a digital uh, currency than what they can now do uh, with shifting into cash, which comes with uh, risk of theft, storage costs, and so on. So the extent of these effects depend on on the one hand, on the degree of adoption of the digital currency, so how much users would like to hold of these new assets, but also on the speed of adoption. So the faster users move into a digital currency, the more disruptive it would be for the banking sector. Of course, at the moment, we don't know very much. So uh, all of these uh, scenarios need to take care of the future save of the financial system. So. We are not talking about today's financial system, but we are probably talking about the financial system in five years time. And uh, the payment landscape is changing very, very quickly and new forms of payments, new players are coming into the market. And so this could be something that uh, changes the counterfactual significantly. It will depend on the design and the framework for CBDC. So there are a lot of key features that still need to be determined like privacy that uh, how much focus it is on the uh, retail, whether you have holding limits, uh, caps for, for transaction and so on. And finally, um, on the adoption and usage. So at the moment we have very limited insight on potential demand. So this is something that has not been around before. We can try to gauge the potential demand, but uh, these uh, demand estimations are fraught with inherent uh, uncertainty. So. Uh, a lot of uncertainties, but um, yeah, we are investigating it at the moment. And um, I think I stop here and hand back to, to Dave.